Oh, hey there. I didn't notice you. I'm going to give you the future in this one video. You'll have to stick around to find out. Mm. Sorry, my sister got a hold of my camera there. I won't let it happen again. Or will I? But anyways, in this video, I'm going to show you the future of cloud computing, and I'm going to give you the basics of what AWS CDK is. So in a, a galaxy far, far away, the meta of cloud computing was using servers that you spin up, kind of like AWS EC2. But now, it's not the how you do things anymore. So after that came auto-scaling groups, like load balancing to ensure applications would come be up and running faster and longer. And then Docker came around soon after to help manage all that. And then came along Lambda and serverless computing. So if you're writing Lambda functions directly in the Lambda console, then it might become tedious to keep all that copying and copying and pasting like code into the Lambda console. So you, if you like, especially if you want to like deploy a new version, it would become tedious. So this is where CDK aims to solve that issue. So CDK, if you do not know, is Cloud Development Kit. It, it was developed by AWS themselves, and it's kind of meant for like moderate to advanced users of AWS. So if you don't know who I am, I am Dan Clark. I am a software engineer, and I work a lot with AWS. And I used to use the serverless framework, which is kind of similar to CDK. You can use both to kind of like use like your infrastructure, make infrastructure as code with like CloudFormation. But CDK will make the CloudFormation for you. And that's kind of like the benefits of it. So you don't have to mess around with all the CloudFormation templates. You just write code in one of the five languages of choice, like um, TypeScript or Python. And then it will kind of create the CloudFormation for you. So you don't have to like mess around with all the CloudFormation templates, because that can become tedious after a while. And you don't have to change them directly. So you just write code, like I said, and it'll produce. And you can like build it, and then you can make it be deployed very easily. So since it is produced by AWS, you do not have to pay anything extra to use the CDK. Like serverless framework, it is from like an outside company, so there is options to pay extra things. So you don't have to do that. Now you might be asking yourself, why would you use TypeScript? That's, I'm hearing people use TypeScript a lot for CDK. Why would you use TypeScript? Well, CDK, what are CDK first supported TypeScript? That was the first language that was supported by CDK, and there's already a lot of CDK code out there that is made in TypeScript. So why would you use something? That isn't TypeScript, I guess. If it's if it's already there, if the code's already there, why not just use it, right? Well, yeah, that's a good point. But um, you can use other languages as well if you want to be feeling adventurous. But it might be a good idea to look at the TypeScript code first and then see if you can convert that to your language of choice. So if you don't know what TypeScript is, uh, it's a superset of JavaScript, so that can be can compiled into normal JavaScript. So I know a lot of developers that come from a Java background think that uh, TypeScript is kind of closer to Java than to like JavaScript. So here I am on the getting starting page of CDK. So I'll link this in the description. So I said that you, EC2 is kind of like old, but you can use it with CDK. You can use stuff like EBS, SNS, Elastic Bow Dancing. Many AWS services can be used with CDK. And this is kind of like the, this is the CDK application. So. This is kind of like the stack that you'll make. You'll make the CloudFormation template, and then from there, you can make the resources. And here's the languages, TypeScript, JavaScript, Java, .NET, and Python. And like I said before, TypeScript is the first one. Um, I guess so it's the recommended one to use. And you have more than, more than many different languages that you can use it with, or more than many different services you can use it with. So one of the advantages of using CDK is you can use logic when defining your infrastructure. So you can do that with CloudFormation as well, but it might be kind of like tedious to do it with CloudFormation. So you can just do it with code here. You can like declare some code that's, hey, you want to make a Lambda function, easy as that. And then you can say, oh, okay, we'll just do this and that, and we'll declare our runtime and boom, we're done, right? Easy. So some prerequisites for the CDK is you're going to need the AWS CLI installed. And then you're going to need uh, like, for example, J Node, if you want to use uh, like TypeScript. And then you're going to need to run AWS Configure. So this will kind of give you like your credentials for your AWS account if you do want to deploy that later on. And then you can go ahead and do npm install. And then you can get the version of CDK. All right, so here I am in VS Code. So I'm going to do uh, the prerequisites to get CDK up and running. So we're going to install it uh, globally, AWS-CDK. And we'll be back when it's done. 
And then you can, of course, type CDK dash dash version to see which version. Oh, I wasn't typing. <laughs> CDK dash dash version to see which version we have. And we get 1.46. OK. All right, so we're going to use this command CDK init app. And then we're going to declare our language to be TypeScript. And then with this, we can create a basic app. And it'll take some time. All right, so the CDK init worked, and it created like everything that we really needed to begin with. So there's some basic commands you can run. CDK build, which will compile the TypeScript to JavaScript. And we can watch it, we can test it, we can deploy it, and then we can synthesize the CloudFormation template. So let's see what the, was created here. So we can see that we have a bin, we have a lib, and we have some tests and some node modules. So whenever you have node modules, one thing that you would want to do is you want to do npm install, and then we can do aws dash cdk slash aws and then slash dash s3, because we need uh, s3 for this. So we'll let this install. Now, let's say we want to do something very basic, like create an S3 bucket, probably one of the most basic things you can do. So first, you're going to have to import the S3 bucket. So import as S3 from that AWS thing at aws-cdk, and then slash aws-s3. And then we want to, so this basic CDK stack is in the lib folder, and we can use this to create and define what goes in our stack. So we would want to say new, we want to make a new S3 bucket. And then we can do this. And then we can name the, the, the like the name our bucket. So we can call it a triple like this video. And then from there, we can say, if we want it to be versioned or not. So this is coming directly from the getting started page for CDK. And then boom, that will create the, the bucket for us. All right, so now that is done, we can use CDK synth in the command line to create the CloudFormation template. So now let's take a look here. So here is the, the template. It'll just show, out, show it in the command line. Or we can go to CDK.out and we can see the template is here as well. And we can see all the um, other stuff it'll make as well. So we can see here the name of the bucket right here is going to be triple like this video. And then it'll have everything about the bucket. So versioning is enabled here. So it just it created that just from those like one line of code in TypeScript. So after we run CDK synth. We can run CDK deploy to deploy this to our, oh, oops, I was typing in the confirmation template. But we can run CDK deploy to run this and deploy it directly to our AWS bucket. All right, so the CDK deploy looked like it worked. It did create in progress, then create complete, and then it'll say the, the ARN at the end. All right, so let us look at the CloudFormation template. So we'll go to CloudFormation in the AWS console. And then we can see basic CDK stack. That's what we just made. And then we can say create complete. So it did deploy. And then we can see there's um, the bucket that was created. So let's take a look at this physical ID. And here we go. We got the, the bucket. And there we go. That is a job well done in my books, I'd say. So I, that's the end of this basic. Of course, you can do a lot more complex stuff. Like you can create Lambda functions, and from those Lambda functions, you can do stuff with DynamoDB. You can use EC2. You can use anything. And it's really as simple as that. If I could do this in like 10 minutes, you can do this in as many, <laughs> whatever time you want to do it in. So it, it's very simple. And I, I think this is really the future of cloud computing because you can kind of like do a bunch of different stuff for this, and then you can redeploy it later for like if you want to have a prod environment, you want to have a dev environment, you can just redeploy each of them. So it's, it's very useful. So taking from the same getting started developer guide, so you can also modify the app and you can find use CDK to diff to see the difference between what's already been deployed and the codes that have changed. This is very like important if you're deploying something to like production and you want to see the difference between what is already deployed. So at the end, if you do not like anything that you built, you can just use CDK to destroy 
and it will get rid of it for you. So you don't have to incur any costs that might occur from the bucket you created, like storage costs. If you're in a free tier, though, it, you should be good, as, as long as you don't store too much stuff and, not, and too many people aren't accessing it. So I hope you liked this video. That's the end for me. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I'll talk to you later. Peace.